I hear? I printed off a cutting board pattern. It was free, and I can put the link down in the description box if anybody wants it. And anyway, I, I'm gonna try to make this. First, I cut my pieces of wood down into two inch strips. Then I used a belt sander to make sure all the pieces were the same width and thickness. The pattern calls for four different colors of wood, 19 pieces total. I am using wenge, maple, and two others that look kind of similar, but I'm, and I'm not sure what they are. Directions say to put it in this pattern right here, so let's do that. So I arranged them and noticed two of the medium colors are pretty similar. So four boards of one kind and two of another. This board and this board, they are different. They look real different. So I think they are maple, or I don't know what they are. Anyway, hopefully they'll look different enough. Next I got them ready for the first glue up. Well, the clamps aren't long enough, so... I can make work though, I can make work. The clamps aren't long enough when I have the pieces laying flat, but once I have the glue on them and tip them up on their sides, then there's plenty of room. So I laid half flat down and glued them, and I'm using Tight Bond 3 and a roller. This is the first time that I've used a roller and I really didn't like it. And it's mostly because I set it down and then a bunch of stuff stuck to it when I did that. So I ended up rolling junk into the glue. So that's not really the roller's fault, but the person using the roller. Anyway, once I had those all positioned together, then I had room again to lay the rest flat and add the glue. Then finally I had them all glued and in position for tightening the clamps. And I put a third clamp on the opposite side just for extra and to try to avoid any arching of the wood. I had watched quite a few YouTubers make cutting boards and they will take the clamps off after a bit to remove the squeeze out. So I did this, but apparently I didn't wait long enough because some of the boards came apart. So I just won't be doing that again. I'd rather wipe off the squeeze out while it is still in the clamps. So I re-glued those areas and reclamped it. And when it was all set up for sure, then I removed the clamps and was going to use the sled to cut things to squareness. But the sled was too short for the board, only because of that piece on the end, but I take that off later. But for now, I ended up using the saw without the sled, and I guess I didn't get that on video, so sorry. Once it was all squared or rectangled up, I ran it through the planer. Next was to cut it into nine equal sections. I wanted to use the sled for this, so I removed that piece on the end that was making it too short, and it worked great. Husband plans to make a wider sled. I made this one here a long time ago, and it's working great now that I took that little piece off. I also had a challenge in figuring out how to divide the board up into nine equal sections. Okay, finally got it figured out that 3 8 equals 0.375. And 14.375 divided by 9 is 1.59. My math just hasn't stayed with me, but I finally got it figured out and only had a small piece of extra. Phew! Husband does all sorts of math, and he is usually the one to figure the stuff out for me when I just can't get it. But I got this one on my own this time. Yay! Okay, so now... What step am I on? I am on cut the strips. Okay, rotate each, rotate each strip 90 degrees. Do that. Go. And this makes an end grain. And then every second strip turn 180 degrees. And this makes the pattern. Yeah. back over there to my oh, area over there.
I could see me dropping these and then not getting them lined up right or the end grains all messed up, so I took half at a time over to the clamps. Also, I am noticing while editing this video right now that I only have eight sections when I should have had nine. So my math wasn't right after all. But you know what? I think it looks just fine. I think this can be done in any amount of sections as long as you're not trying to make a super specific pattern. So there appears to be lots of forgiveness with cutting boards. Yay! Then I turned them on their sides and put the type on three on them. And this time I used a small brush and I was able to lay them all out and glue them all at the same time. I also used a lot more glue this time because I didn't think I used enough for the last glue up. However, it looked like it was okay, but I wanted to make extra sure. So more glue I go. Then I clamped it all up and wiped away the squeeze out and then added that extra clamp. I didn't clean up the other side just because I didn't want to risk messing anything up by lifting the whole thing. I could see that happening real easy. So I avoided that potential mishap. Let's just take a gander at it so far. Ooh, cool! Awesome! Yay! Nice! And I let that set up overnight. Hey! I'm super excited to finish up this breadboard! Woo! So I'm gonna run it through the sander. Yeah! Take it out of these clamps. I was super stoked about the, how the board was turning out and I was celebrating a little bit, which ended up being a little too soon in celebration because while I was running it through the sander a gazillion times, it started to get some burn marks on it. I figured that was all part of the process, so I didn't think anything of it. So I just kept on going. I noticed the ends had some squeeze out, so I thought I would just cut those sides using the sled again. Husband had re-added another board to the end sometime yesterday, but I was able to use it thankfully. And I took off just enough to smooth up those ends. Next I thought I would be able to remove the sanding burns with my orbital, but since this is now an end grain board, it didn't work. I tried heavier and heavier grits and none took it off. I didn't want to warp it either by sanding super hard in one area. You know what I mean? So what I've learned is I need to let the sander work and not force it to remove a lot of material at one time. And I didn't think I was removing too much, but apparently I was. Okay, so the end grain looks like it's all burned from the sander. And I can't seem to sand it out with 80 grit, so I have never heard anybody else talk about this that I've watched make these end grade cutting boards. So is it ever going to come out? Or is it just going to look sander burnt? Hey, so I decided just to keep on running it through the sander, you know, taking uh, just running it over and over again on the same setting, and it seems to be working. Check it out. Woo, look at that. I keep putting it on, like it's on the same. I haven't moved it like for six times going through there. It's still sanding some. Weird. But anyways, taking it off. Look at that. Woo. A little bit more to do. And I am lowering it just a little bit and then letting it run and run and run and run. And working. Yay. Yay. Look at that. Yeah. Yay! That looks much better. Oh, yay! But when I tried the back side, it didn't take it off. It's like it burnished the burning marks and just made them shinier and shinier. So I left the back side as is, which husband didn't approve of, but I figured it's the back or the bottom, so I'm going to leave it. And I could put some little feet on it or something to make sure that it's, it is for sure the bottom. Live and learn, and a note to myself is don't do that to the next one. So I used the trim router and put a round over on the edges, both on the top and on the bottom. Then I repaired a few areas that had some gaps. The gaps weren't huge, and I think they were from the first glue up where I thought I may not have used enough glue. So I used some sawdust and Type Mon 3 to fill those areas. 
Once it was dry, I sanded using the orbital and it cleaned up those repairs really well. Then I went over everything with 220 hand sandpaper to soften up the edges and the corners and all over. Yay! Woo! Next was to put the food grade finish on it. I have a little bottle of cutting board wax, but husband just happened to be making a mineral oil and carnauba wax combo. He's been making a bunch of cutting boards and decided to whip up his own finish. I asked him if he had any extra and he gave me two tins worth, so I'm trying it out. He plans to give a small tin of the concoction when he sells a cutting board so folks have the stuff on hand to retreat their board, and I think that's a great idea. I noticed there are many thoughts on finishing cutting boards. The more videos and articles I read, the more ideas there were. And I could watch one video, and then the next one that I would watch would say, don't do it the way that I had just watched. So my takeaway from all that is there are a ton of different products to use, and there are a ton of ways to apply them. So I'm just going to figure out what I like, and I'm going to do it that way. There appears to be no right or wrong way in my eye, but one way will always be wrong to someone, no matter what. And I'm finding this to be true in all aspects of life, not just cutting board finishes. But that's okay. Alrighty, so here it is! Yay! And the back is burned, but I watched a video by Matt Cremona, and he had some end-grained boards that he was remaking because they had cracked and stuff. And he actually used a router on a flattening table. And so I'm going to try that to see if I can just go over this and get rid of the burn. Yay! But for now, I'm just going to complete the video and say, yay! Cool! So thanks for joining me, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Well, there's actually some more, because I couldn't stand to leave it like that, and so I'm going to try to fix it. So just routing off a little bit made a really big difference, but I still had to run it back through the belt sander again. And I made sure to clean the belt a little bit with the belt eraser, and that seemed to help a lot. And so I just did little bits and little bits and little bits, and it made it look a lot better. Still doesn't look as good as the top, but looks way better than it did. And then I added those little rubber feet. Okay, this is really the end this time. So thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye!